Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and it's story time. This is an incident that happened to me. It's about a decade ago. I want to say it was before my second child was born, but definitely after my first. So somewhere around 2007, 2008, I was still working as an aerospace engineer doing this thing on the side. And daily, I would put packages uh, outside my house. I was working out of my house. I would put packages outside my house for my mailman to pick up. It wasn't many every day, you know, two or three, whatever. It's a long time ago. And there was one particular Saturday that I remember because the day before I got in a load of Junkers watches, or what I would call a load back then, and a lot of them were on back order. And I was so happy, and I had filled 13 orders for that Saturday. 13. It was a big number. It was a couple thousand dollars uh, in sales. And I proceeded to place them outside, go about my business on Saturday. I remember I went food shopping with my son and came home, and the packages were gone like they normally would be because the mailman takes them, and eh, thought nothing of it. Uh, unfortunately, I have no props, no nothing. Uh, everything I had from this... I, I, had a report, but a police report, but I, I couldn't find it. I, I looked, couldn't find it. Anyway, uh, I come home. I, I, everything's gone, right? Packages are gone. Great. By Tuesday or Wednesday of that week, I, I get the email. You know, hi, you know, you, you sent me an email, said my, my order shipped, but I track it and it says it's still awaiting pickup. I'm like, that's okay. This happens from time to time. It happens if they don't do an, an origin scan. Nothing to be concerned about. Well, then another person emails, then another person, another person. Now I got like five people. So I'm like, you know what? Let, let me let me look into this a little bit deeper. I track every single one. They all have the same status from the post office. It says awaiting package pickup. You know, we got notice that you printed a label, but you know, we haven't gotten the package from you yet. So uh, just you know, in this case, because they've never gotten it, insurance doesn't even apply. So I'm like, wow, that's really strange. So I text my mailman, and you know, hey insert name here uh because I, I was i was on that kind of a basis with him i said did you pick up for me on saturday and he says no he says i thought it was kind of odd oh, usually you have a, a couple things out every day but that day there was nothing he says i remember it because there was nothing and i was like oh my goodness that i put out like 13 things and he's like no way and i'm like yeah way <laughs> so i'm like okay let's let's think about this for a second i don't know why I go to eBay. Not sure why. Just go to eBay. Type in Junkers watches. And sure enough, there's one for sale in my zip code. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's another one for sale in my zip code. And a third one. And a fourth one for sale in my zip code. So I click it on the listings. Sure enough, it's my photography from my website. It's my stamp warranty booklets. Selling new Junkers watches. And I'm like, oh my God, somebody... <laughs> Somebody copped the watches from, from my stoop and is selling them online. Of course, back then this wasn't funny. I was like really, you know, obviously really upset. And I'm thinking, okay, what can we do here? So obviously I contact the seller, tell them it's stolen merchandise. You know, you get no reply, obviously. Uh, contact eBay, you know, we'll look into it. You know, nothing's going to happen quick enough for me. Uh, so I start going through the guy who's selling it. I go through his history. And I see he bought a weight bench about a year about a year ago, and I was able to track down the person he bought the weight bench from, emailed them, told them my whole story of how I think it's stolen goods. The guy was really nice. He said, "Here's the contact information I have," and sure enough, it's like three miles from where I live. So stupid me, I get in the car, <laughs> I drive there, and it's a dilapidated, you know, worn down house boarded up boarded up windows and stuff and I'm thinking I'm just gonna die someone's gonna come murder me it looks like a murder house knock 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 no answer knock 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 no answer ring the bell nothing 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 it really looks deserted there's no cars in driveway it's next to a construction site it's just totally wrong so that well forget that nonsense get back in my car drive home now I'm still racking my brain the handle of the person on eBay that's selling this stuff is looks like a first initial, a last name, and then a, a year of birth. Like people, you know, did when the internet first came out. You know, people. And I guess people still do it, but it's getting harder and harder to find, you know, to find handles and email addresses that work. So on a whim, 
write my mailman a note before the mail comes the next day. You know, hey, here's the guy's name on eBay. Does this ring a bell to you? My mail comes. I'm not, I'm not around. The mail comes. He writes, leaves me the note, writes back on it, and leaves it in the mailbox. I collect my mail, and it says, hey, Mark, <laughs> try number 14 on your block. I'm like, what? I'm number 21. Like, number 14, I can kind of see it's down the block, and it's around the corner a little bit. Like, you got to be kidding me. So, of course, I'm like, well, do I walk there? I mean, it's literally a five-minute walk or four-minute walk. But do I walk there? Do I drive? I'm like, you know, let me drive. So it makes the illusion that I don't live nearby, but obviously these people know where I live. <laughs> I drive down there. Knock on the door. Lady answers. And I said to her, I said, hey. I said, I live in the area. I have a business. Excuse me. I said, I have a business in the area. Uh, last Saturday, a couple of parcels were taken off my stoop. They were watches. I do believe that they are located, you know, at this address. Um, and I'd like to get them back. She says, don't know what you're talking, in her accent, she says, I don't know what you're talking about. And she proceeds to close the door. And I said, that's fine. I said, just know that after this, my next stop is 2nd Precinct, and I'll be filling out a police report. I'm not sure if I was really going to do that, because I'm not sure what they would do for me. But as she's closing, she stops. She goes, one minute. And then she closes the door. So I'm waiting. She says, one minute. I wait a minute. Sure enough, she opens the door back up again and says, please go around the back of the house. There's a, uh, a large six-foot PVC fence. There's a gate. She says, come around the back. Okay, again, here I go. Stupid things to do. Going to get murdered. Who the hell knows? But I might get my watches back, so it's probably worth it. Go around the back, and there's a sliding glass door. Kid opens it. I say kid. I mean, uh, it was 87 was the number on the thing, and this is 2009-ish, so he's in his 20s, 21, 22. And he says, ah, you, you are looking for some watches? And I said, yes, they were stolen from me. 13 of them. I said, I could identify them. I could provide you model numbers, receipts, you know, anything you want. He proceeds to turn around and picks up a shopping bag. <laughs> and so he had had like four or five on sale on eBay. And the other eight were in a bag, still sealed with the shipping label on it. The other were opened uh, for him to see what they were and I guess to ascertain price. I said, where the hell did you get these? He says, well, and here's where it got really weird. It doesn't really matter, but he said, oh, my buddy owed me four grand. And he said, I don't have the money for you, but I can get you some watches that you can sell on eBay. And, and I said, that's a great idea. I said, send me the watches. So he says, buddy gave him the watches. Doesn't really matter. He's like, please just, you know, I'll give you everything back. I just don't want any trouble. And uh, look at me. Like, I'm going to give you trouble. I mean, come on. There's, there's nothing here. <laughs> so, so he says, I, I say, fine. Give me everything back. And I won't, you know, won't make a police report. I won't do anything, blah, blah, blah. Gives me everything. I go back, I count, everything's there, nothing's touched, nothing's nothing's used, it's all brand new, everything's still there. Uh, so very happy, I can now resend all the merchandise. And then I, I'm thinking later on that day, or the next day, you know, my wife says, you know, you really should, you know, file a police report, you know, and, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, I really should, because who the hell knows what else is being taken around the neighborhood. So I did go down to Second Precinct, and they said to me, well, since you have this stuff back, they actually couldn't believe the whole thing. They, I get there and I tell them I want to report stolen merchandise, but I recovered it. And they're like, why are you reporting it if it's recovered? And, you know, as I was telling the story, more and more officers were coming around to hear it because they were like, first of all, you're crazy. What you did is stupid. We can never condone it. But what you did is absolutely correct uh, for what you wanted. Uh, because like they said, we could never do it. It would take us forever to get the paperwork in order. Uh, really, the way you did it was the only way to get your stuff back. But again, it was stupid. You know, don't ever do it again. And I, I know these things, but you know, sometimes we just do stupid stuff. Uh, anyway, so I, I did decide to fill out a police report simply because, you know, what they said to me in the police station was, they're not going to question the guy. They're not going to go nothing. But if a neighbor anywhere in the vicinity reports that a package is stolen, missing from their stoop, whatever. Here they now have some kind of a probable cause to go and question uh, this individual. Anyway, nothing ever happened. But that is my story of stolen watches that I was able to recover. Uh, so this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. Like the video if you enjoy it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. If you have any questions or comments, want to share a similar story, put them down below and I will be sure to read and address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.